greetings and welcome to an LGR thing and this thing right here is the Oregon Trail or rather a new iteration of it for 2018 and it's being sold at a suggested price of 25 US dollars. This is a dedicated electronic handheld unit based on the classic edutainment game that was made most famous on the Apple II in the mid 1980s. However, as fondly remembered as that version is, that is not exactly what you're getting here. In fact, what you get is a little bit more advanced than I expected. More on that in a moment. But yeah, for now, just look at this thing, man. I'm always fascinated by dedicated handhelds. I loved getting those Tiger Electronics things back in the day, even though they pretty much all sucked. But this is thankfully a lot better than that. But somewhat annoyingly, it is exclusive to Target stores in the USA, at least as I'm recording this video. And no, this is not sponsored. They didn't send it to me or anything. I didn't get it for free. I just saw it on the shelf and bought it because it looked cool. And it turns out Target is no stranger to selling exclusive Oregon Trail products. They also released this Oregon Trail card game a year or two ago by Pressman. Similar packaging, but uh, yeah, it's just a card game. I'm not huge into card games, but I picked it up anyway because I like Oregon Trail products. Anyway, this electronic version is manufactured by Basic Fun, which is a division of the Bridge Direct. I've never owned anything of theirs, but I have seen some of them hanging around various shops, especially these miniature arcade machines. Those were kind of impressive, I thought. But yeah, this is the first one of their thingies that I have picked up, and you know what? I'm just ready to get inside of this thing because, I mean, just look. Set out on the trek from Independence, Missouri to Oregon's Willamette Valley. Uh, many fond memories of playing Oregon Trail games over the years, so let's jump into the box and see what you get inside. Yeah, there's these little twisty things just twist off of there, and uh, there you go. You got one of those little pull tabs to get the included batteries doing their thing and to get the store demo mode disabled. And say hello to the Oregon Trail unit itself. A rather compact little thing about the size of a uh, Game Boy Color. Definitely a good bit thicker than that, though. And to me, it actually looks a little bit like a Macintosh, like uh, an earlier compact Mac. But anyway, down here you have some controls which are, uh, well, they don't feel great, let's put it that way. Cheap, gummy, plasticky things with a rather bizarre D-pad here. You have these diagonals and cardinal directions, then these other keys for enter, a wagon for the menu, you got the sound on and off, and a yes or no button for different questions in-game. And you also get a little black and white fold-out instruction manual, which pretty much just tells you to play the game. But if you've played practically any Oregon Trail iteration over the past 30-something years, then you'll be right at home because this really is a classic iteration that has been redone to fit in this handheld form. Press the power button and it powers on and yep, you get a backlit 2.5 inch LCD screen. It's quite sharp, very readable. This is what I was impressed with. I was not expecting this to look this nice, relatively speaking. Yeah, sorry about the dust and like scratches. A lot of that is underneath the plastic when I got it. I tried to clean it up as much as I could, but you know. Anyway, here you go. This is the Oregon Trail and it is, it's the classic game, really. I've covered this before on LGR many years ago, but the gist of the gameplay is you're a person or a family, really, or a group of people that are trying to get from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States in the mid 1800s. And there are different difficulty levels depending on who you choose to be from the start. So the banker has the most money and the carpenter is kind of in the middle and the farmer is like, eh. You can name your leader and four members of your party, which is always an opportunity to have some fun with the naming. And before setting off on your trek, you have to buy some equipment and supplies. And you'll need to buy, at minimum, some oxen to pull you along. And then you have the option to get as much food, clothing, ammunition, and spare parts as you want and or need. And there you go, you're ready to start. Good luck, you have a long and difficult journey ahead of you. So yeah, you not only get a full color screen, but a pretty decent little sound chip that plays chip tunes and PCM sounds. It doesn't have a headphone out jack, so I couldn't get a direct recording, but yeah, it sounds pretty darned acceptable for this tiny little thing. This is a conversion of sorts of one of the classic versions of the game, and if I had to guess, it seems to be based on the 1989-1990 MS-DOS version of the game, at least judging by these graphics. It's not identical, obviously they've modified it a bit to be on this tiny little screen, but it's definitely not the Apple II version. I mean, compare that, it just doesn't look anything like it. I'm assuming though that they just made their own version for this specific type of hardware because it's not a direct emulation of any version of the game that I 
I've ever played or seen, it's just kind of a mishmash of a few different things. Anyway, at this point, it really is just the Oregon Trail. You're going around, trying not to die, attempting to ford rivers and failing spectacularly, and running into all kinds of problems like heat and broken arms, and of course cholera and the infamous dysentery. Oh no! And every so often you get a nice little screen with some nice little music that plays and lets you know where you are on your trek across the United States. And as gummy and imprecise, kind of clunky feeling as that directional pad is for up, down, left, and right, it's fine for the menus. I never had any problem navigating and pressing enter is, again, a bit gummy, but it's fine. This is not like a quick reaction type of game. You're really just navigating menus for the most part. And for that, it is perfectly adequate. However, one of the key parts of the Oregon Trail is the hunting mini game, and this is a bit of a different story as far as controls go. You still have your cardinal directions, but you also have to use those diagonal keys that are around the directional diamond. It made hunting way more difficult than it needed to be. And the animals move just as fast as they would on other versions of the game, from what I could tell, so they didn't seem to make any concessions for this slightly awkward control scheme. I was just wasting ammo left and right. So yeah, that is a little disappointing. I don't know why they couldn't have put a little tiny joystick on there or a more traditional directional pad. Oh well, it's completely playable though, and I was able to get through the entire game without dying. Well, I mean, a whole lot of my people died. I think I might have been the only one left by the end, but hey, I made it, and that is all that matters. Look at all the other people that have played who haven't actually played because I'm the only one to have played this unit. Unfortunately, I didn't run across any pepperoni and cheese on the trail, so I guess this is not based on that particular version that was distributed back in the day, which I didn't expect it to, because as I said, I believe this is a custom version that is mixing together different aspects of different Oregon Trail releases. I don't know about you, but I was kind of curious to get inside of this thing and see what was going on. And yeah, check out these craptastic batteries that it came with. I do not trust these at all. They felt like they had the weight of toothpicks. They were just cheap and pathetic, but hey, at least it came with them. So getting the unit open is thankfully very simple. You just have four Phillips head screws, one in each corner, and there you go. It pops right open and there's not much going on inside, as you might expect for a handheld that costs $24.99. And as expected, this little piece PCB right here, you got this epoxy resin crap that's covering up the chips, so I don't know exactly what they are and I'm not going to try to peel that off of there. But if you see the board right there, it's a little bit of a different layout, but it has the same number as others that I've seen in certain videos, E156176. The video I'm specifically thinking of is this one by the 8-bit guy that he did on the company's other mini tabletop arcades. The board is very similar, in fact it has that same number on there and everything, but the layout is a little bit different. So yeah, I guess they're just sort of repurposing these electronics for whatever they need to over in China, which is pretty darned interesting to me. I don't know the specifics of it, maybe somebody else can figure out if it is like a Famicom clone NES on a chip type of thing, I don't know man. So what you end up with is a standalone version of the Oregon Trail that plays a lot like what you remember, but is a new thing and a new form factor, and it's just dedicated Oregon Trail on the go. I like this idea. I don't know about you, and I have a feeling these are going to start becoming collectibles. Maybe they already are. So if you can, I recommend picking one of them up if you're interested in a little handheld Oregon Trail. And I'm also really curious if anybody's going to be able to like hack these things to do something else. I'd be down for a portable Super Solver Spellbound, just throwing that out there. Karma San Diego, something like that. Yeah, man, bring on the portable edutainment machines. Well, anyway, uh, that is it for this episode of LGR, and I hope that you enjoyed checking out this little thingy. And if you did, well, stick around. I do more videos every Monday and Friday, and occasionally I'll cover something like this that strikes my fancy, even though it's a little bit different than what I normally do, but that's okay, I hope. And as always, thank you very much for watching.